hurricane is moving in fast from a hundred miles at sea. In hours, it will strike land with devastating force. of a hurricane's fury, we are left completely helpless. From space, a full-grown hurricane appears as a giant pinwheel of swirling clouds. On Earth, they are the most violent and frightening of all nature's storms. Since the 1930s, the daring work of newsreel cameramen has allowed us to glimpse the violent power of hurricanes. With little warning, they pound against our coastlines like sledgehammers. predictable rage, they lash against anything that stands in their way. The destruction to property is enormous. Their toll in human lives is massive. Centuries ago, the Indians of the Caribbean worshipped and feared a powerful sky god called Huracan. Today, the storms we call hurricanes demand an equal respect. They remain the largest, most powerful storms on Earth, and their uncontrolled fury can still inspire both awe and terror. Tuesday, August 4th, 1969. An orbiting weather satellite spots a small patch of turbulence in the mid-Atlantic. The rainstorm is one of a hundred that form every year over the ocean's tropical water. The warm sea creates funnels of air that billow up thousands of feet. The clouds gather together. The Earth's rotation gives them spin. A hurricane is born. On Thursday, August 13th, a team of Navy hurricane hunters flies directly into the storm. Hot spot on. Engineer, maintain my airspeed at 190 knots. Hi, right, sir. Are we at Hurricane Hunter says? I'm going down to 500 feet. Metro, keep that wind on the wing. To pierce into the tranquil eye, they fly low, barely above the water. Approaching 500 feet. Metro, steady. Instruments measure the hurricane's strength and gauge its size and speed. The early indications are alarming. It is a big storm and still growing. For more than a week, the storm churns across the Atlantic and into the Caribbean Sea. 
There she lingers, gathering strength. Her final path still unknown. The third hurricane of the season, she is named Camille. A hurricane watch goes up along the entire Gulf Coast. No one knows yet exactly where Camille will strike, but at harbors and marinas everywhere, boaters prepare for the worst. Suddenly, the message goes out. Camille has made her move. She's heading directly for the Mississippi coast. Sunday, August 16th. Advanced winds hit the coastline. Everywhere, people start boarding up. More than 50,000 people take the advice to leave, to evacuate upstate and find safety inland. draws closer, there are those who choose to stay behind. The young, the unbelievers, the thrill-seekers, the sightseers, the stubborn. By afternoon, the winds begin to roar. Camille is churning dangerously close. attempt a last-minute escape. For most, it is too late. The roads are blocked or washed away. In the drenching rain and wind, levees collapse, flooding entire towns. At dusk, the full force of the storm reaches Mississippi. Wind velocity hits 200 miles per hour. spin off randomly, blowing homes to bits. At midnight, a final blow. A 30-foot tidal surge smashes the coast. 